the European Space Agency released the data from uh, uh, ExoMars uh, camera uh, on one of its uh, orbiters of Mars, and uh, it looks like uh, they detected the, uh, the interstellar visitor, 3 Atlas, that uh, uh, was discovered back on July 1st, uh, 2025, this year, and looked uh, rather anomalous. Uh, the object is uh, quite large and uh, it's also aligned in its path with uh, a plane of the planets around the sun. So uh, it's quite intriguing. It offers us a gift, a rare gift of a highly visible object that uh, many of our space probes can, can look at. And uh, right now, uh, you know, a few days ago on October 3rd, it passed uh, near Mars within 29 million kilometers. And uh, this camera was able to detect it. And uh, what we see is a ball of light uh, with a slight extension. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, it doesn't look like a typical comet where you see a beautiful tail of dust uh, stretching away from uh, the direction of the sun. Uh, so it looks uh, still uh, quite anomalous. It's similar to the image we obtained from the Hubble Space Telescope on July 21st, uh, which was enigmatic because there was an extension of the image in the direction of the sun as if there is a jet uh, that is luminous uh, uh, in the direction uh, leading to the sun rather than uh, away from the sun the way we see for comets. So uh, we see now that it passed uh, near Mars and there will be uh, much better data. The, uh, the best is yet to come from the high-rise camera on, on board NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. The data was taken, but because of the government shutdown, we haven't seen it. Uh, that particular camera is half a meter in diameter and can give us 30 kilometer resolution uh, of a uh, three I Atlas, this new interstellar object. And that could uh, potentially tell us how big it is because uh, the amount of sunlight that is reflected from it will set uh, the brightest pixel in the image that we get from NASA. So uh, everyone is eagerly awaiting that because it will be the best, the highest resolution image we have. And you know, a picture is worth a thousand words. So uh, we should all uh, see what the data shows. And in the coming months, uh, this object will pass close to another mission called JUICE uh, 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 on its way to Jupiter. It will also, um, that will happen during November. But just before that, on October 29th, it will pass closest to the sun. And, uh, and then it will get warmed up. Uh, and the question is, how will it respond to this extreme uh, environment close to the sun and then uh, in uh, on december 19th uh, 2025 just before christmas it's supposed to be closest to earth uh, at a distance that is uh, roughly 1.8 times the earth sun separation and after that on march 16 2026 it will come close to jupiter uh, within 54 million kilometers from Jupiter. And there is a spacecraft uh, orbiting Jupiter called Juno that uh, we hope that NASA will use to learn more about it. And, you know, altogether, it's uh, very exciting because uh, we've never thought about the potential uh, implications of finding an object that big uh, that could uh, be something other than uh, a rock, an icy rock. Just imagine that it was a technological object that selected this uh, orbit to be aligned with the planets around the sun for a reason. It was designed by some intelligence and uh, we are not uh, prepared for such a visit. And perhaps the wake up call from uh, 3i Atlas, this object, uh, will alert us to uh, be more uh, uh, um, aware of uh, the potential risks. And, I wrote uh, actually a white paper to the United Nations that I sent uh, last week uh, with the hope that they will establish a, an international committee that would analyze future data on uh, other interstellar objects like 3i Atlas uh, that uh, we will get in the decade and uh, examine whether uh, any of them shows anomalies that might be alien technology. Professor Loeb, I so 
love your passion for this topic and your excitement on it. I don't know if I could have taken your class at 8 a.m. when I was in college, but um, <laughs> tell me a well, little bit how this government shutdown, I think all things come you know, full circle, how the government shutdown actually affects it. Um, you mentioned that we haven't seen the images yet from NASA because of the shutdown, but how exactly? Yeah, so in fact, uh, some people ask me uh, whether that might uh, indicate that there is uh, evidence for uh, alien intelligence out there uh, because NASA is delaying the release of data. I said uh, to them in response that uh, this uh, shutdown and the delay is uh, not a sign of uh, uh, extraterrestrial uh, intelligence, but more a sign of terrestrial stupidity. <laughs> Uh, and uh, uh, with respect to why I'm so excited, uh, you know, it's, I, I, uh, the question of are we alone is the most romantic question in science. And if we ever find a partner in our cosmic neighborhood, you know, it could give a new meaning to our existence, the way uh, you go on a blind date and find a partner. Uh, what I really hope is that whoever uh, comes on the other side, the, uh, of the table when we encounter, go on a blind date with uh, some alien uh, uh, technology, uh, that would not be a blind date with a serial killer. You know, that's really the main uh, issue here. And we should be aware of uh, a black swan event where a very low probability encounter uh, could have devastating consequences. So as of now, my recommendation is um, to establish an observatory in the northern hemisphere, not just the southern hemisphere, that like we have in terms of the Rubin Observatory in Chile, so that we can see the entire skies. That will cost us about about a billion dollars um, uh, because the Rubin Observatory in Chile cost uh, uh, both the Department of Energy and the, the National Science Foundation about a billion dollars. So if we have another one that is not just monitoring the southern sky, but also the northern sky, we'll have a full alert system uh, covering the entire sky. And then if we ever have a verified encounter, then uh, of course the uh, level of investment should rise by a factor of a thousand because uh, that's the level of investment we have every year uh, for uh, uh, the military budgets. And you know, when there is a, a threat from uh, outside the solar system, it could pose a, a, a serious, it's a serious matter for the international uh, uh, financial system. So it definitely uh, requires more attention. You know, <laughs> this gives a whole new um, outlook on what men are from Mars or women are from Venus. It, it gives a whole new perspective on all of that uh, when you talk about dating. But you know, uh, when, I, when I hear you say uh, a delay, um, I'm wondering how delays factor into NASA's um, schedule of things that they are um, trying to achieve in the next several years. Yeah, so the instruments uh, took data that we know for sure. Um, uh, the, the, for example, the high-rise camera on board the, the NASA uh, NASA's uh, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter collected the data at the right time on October 2nd when the three I Atlas came close to Mars. So we know the data was taken and there are people analyzing or processing the data in universities. Uh, and uh, then they cannot communicate the data to the public because of the shutdown. So basically we have no access. The data is not made public. Uh, even though there is competition with the European uh, Space Agency, with the Chinese Space Agency. So it's rather unfortunate that uh, the shutdown is simply uh, not allowing us to, to know what the, the data looks like, except for the research team that has access to it. They are not allowed to communicate it publicly until NASA will come back uh, on its feet. So uh, that's the implication of the NASA shutdown. And of course, uh, funding and uh, other activities within NASA are also being uh, halted uh, as a result of that. So altogether, it's not uh, really good for science to have this shutdown. And my hope is that in the coming days, uh, this uh, political problem will be resolved. Professor Avila, Harvard, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> my head is spinning, but we appreciate what you do. Thank you.